Greetings, Earthling. I've uh, figured uh, I'm working on a video. Uh, I think I'll do a video about transhumanism and uh, this morning. And uh, it's, uh, I guess it's actually afternoon now, but it's, uh, I'm thinking about the, the interface between the brain and the mind and be, between the hardware and the software, and between the man and the machine. Those interfaces are all very Im critical, important features of human nature and civilization and the technology and everything. You know, I, I think that it's uh, this advanced technology is a good thing we definitely need to have a consultation about that. Our leaders, our Congress, it needs to t consult about it and decide what they think is best for everybody. Because, it, it, you know, wild, wild and free are two different things. You know, wild is not, is uncivilized, it's barbaric. You know, and what we want, we don't want that. We're not, we, you know, what we want is freedom. Freedom and wild are two different things. Wild is lawless. Freedom is lawful. And so we need to have the rule of law. And we need to have the, the rule of law in our computer science and in our, you know, the way we deal with artificial intelligence. We need to be prepared for whatever is coming because we don't know what it's going to be. Nobody knows what it's going to be like. It is going to be, it's by far the most dangerous weapon we've ever invented. And we need to deal with it now before it's too late, you know, before it causes some terrible disaster. And uh, so it's an interesting subject. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's it's okay. It's a good thing, you know. And uh, so just uh, think about what we can do to fix, uh, you know, use this lever for the benefit of all, each one of us individually and also for all of us together, the whole entire human race. And, uh, you know, because that's what we want. We want, uh, you know, because, I mean, you got to think about, like, people that lose their legs for some reason. And, you know, having artificial legs would be pretty good, I, I figure. If I lost my legs and I could get artificial legs, that'd be a heck of a lot better than getting around in a wheelchair. You know, so I want to do that. I think that's a good idea, and I think we should pursue it for sure. And we should do whatever is good for people, what's best for the individual and also what's best for the community, for all mankind, you know, and we need to work on that and keep working on it and keep improving ourselves individually and the whole city all, all together. And uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I figure I'd make this video. I like to have it. I like cities. I, I grew up in Wyoming in a small town in Wyoming, population 102, Deaver, Wyoming. I went to high school in Deaver, Wyoming, population 102. In 1978, I was supposed to graduate in 1978. I didn't finish high school. I did go to college a couple of different times. I took computer science in. Uh, Powell, Wyoming, for a semester, and then I took, uh, I was a drug rehab counselor for a year at Idaho State University. I was in that course, and, uh, you know, I didn't, I, when they started talking about the power differential, and I couldn't be friends with my patients because I had power over them, and all that, I'm just like, oh, what? I, I, that's not something I want to learn. I don't agree with this idea that doctors are superior. Putting doctors on a pedestal is a terrible, terrible idea. It's like, that is, to me, one of the most 
sickening ideas I've ever heard of, man. And I got out of there. I just left, walked away from Idaho State University because I didn't want to learn what they were teaching. And because uh, I don't believe there's any such thing as an inferior or superior human being. You know, that's one of the things. If we're going to have this artificial intelligence, the only thing that is, it's going to make it work, there's only one thing, and that's faith. We have to have faith in God and, and submission to God. And it needs to be kind of everybody needs to be doing it because the, the, this power of artificial intelligence is so great. You can't have uncivilized people doing it, using it, because they have, they have to at least want to do good and not harm, you know be constructive and not destructive. If so, if we got people running around, selfish people running around using artificial intelligence, the, the damage they could cause is just incredible. You know, so it's really important that the people that are using it have the right motives. It's the motives. And the only way to get that and ensure that is a, is a, is to have one common faith of all mankind. And so we need to work to that. I'm not going to, I have my opinions about what that should be, but I'm probably not going to say anything, you know, say what it is, because you, I've already said it on the website, but, you know, everybody needs to have faith in, you know, if you're a Muslim, then be a Muslim. A Christian, be a Christian and practice Christianity in your life and study those writings. And, you know, if you're a Buddhist, do that, you know, but be spiritual. That's what I say. You know, I, I believe that submission to God is the inner essence of every religion, every single one of them, including Buddhism. You know, I know they don't necessarily believe in God, but it's the same thing. It's just submission. I've studied them all, and they're all saying the same thing. You know, they got different ways of saying it. But they're, they're all, it's all, they're all saying the same thing, submission to God. And um, so practice that in your life, submission to God. And uh, love God and serve God. And that's the only thing that's going to make our uh, artificial intelligence, you know, it's, it's the only thing that makes civilization sustainable. Is one common faith. You know, the people have to have that moral, spiritual connection with each other and understanding. You know, that's like the Tower of Babel is a story about people coming into the big empire from everywhere in the world, and they all spoke different languages, so, and they had different cultures and different ideas about what's right and wrong, and that was the end of civilization. And, and, and it's the same all the time. That's, it's like a, one of the laws of nature, you know, human nature and civilization. You know, you have, one common faith is absolutely essential for civilization. And so we need to have that, and we need to teach it in a general way, not, you know, there's no forcing anybody to believe anything. You know, that's like the one most serious crime and spirituality is people thinking they have a right to tell anybody else what to believe. That's why this thing with the doctors, you know, man, oh man, you know, it's like we we had a revolution against the king, you know, because we didn't like the king telling everybody what to think and do and believe and everything. And now all of a sudden, you know, we didn't get rid of the king just so we could have doctors telling us what to think and do and everything. And we got all these corporations saying, you know, harassing people and because of they're saying things they don't agree with. And that's, that's insane. It's crazy. I, I, one thing I, I believe is that the earth is, a, is, is the land of the free, the whole entire earth. We cannot, you know, everybody wants to talk about how you know, I like globalization. I believe globalization is a good thing. These beautiful cities that we're building are the 21st century Pueblos, and they're a good thing. And we're building a civilization on this planet, and it's a good thing. And 
it's global. It's all around the world. It's not no one nation. There's no superpowers anymore. You know, it's it's we're all it's all the nations together. And they these you know when if we allow totalitarianism to fester anywhere on earth, it all it'll rise up just like it did. You know, we we had the United States was a great superpower and we dominated the whole earth and we could do anything we wanted to. And we did for a long time, for the, you know, 50, 100, you know, ever since the end of World War II, you know, the United States was the big superpower and in control of earth, you know, created the United Nations, which is a great civilization. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I don't agree. I think... It's not perfect, neither is the United States. The United States is not perfect. But I tell you one thing, all these people trying to tear down the United States, I don't agree with them either. They, I don't like them at all. Because I would much rather improve this civilization than tear it down and start over. That's crazy. And um, same thing with the United Nations. It's not perfect, and we need to improve it. And but I don't agree with these people that, you know, some people don't like me because I like the United States. Other people don't like me because I like the United Nations. And that's just the way I, I, I've always thought like that. Even when I was a kid, I, I've always kind of been a globalist. You know, I'm a nationalist and a globalist. I, you know, I, I like the, uh, the founding fathers of the United States are like my parents. Because while my parents were out partying and drinking and partying, I was reading history books about, you know, what their philosophy was. And I studied it. And I studied the Bible and, the, you know, and those are my ancestors and, those, and that's where I got my values. And I, you know, John Adams and Ben Franklin and all those guys, those are my parents. That's where I got my values. And I agree with them. I respect them. I love and respect the founding fathers of the United States. And I believe they did a great job. They created a great nation. And we have been a great nation for 250 years now. But And we're in worse shape right now than we've ever been, I think. Even worse than the Civil War. And, uh, you know, I think we need to fix it, you know, and we need to make it better, you know, improve the United States. And we need to improve the United Nations. The United Nations was a good idea from the start. You read the Charter of the United Nations and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You, I mean, the, it's a good system. Now, that doesn't mean that it's perfect and that there's no bad guys trying to control the world because there are bad guys trying to control the world. And we need to deal with that. But just condemning the United Nations because they're part of the system is that's just dumb. It's it's cowardly actually to run away. We need the the United Nations needs the United States to be involved in it, standing up for capitalism and democracy and human rights. We have to do it. We need to, we need that and they need that. You know, because, and we need to keep doing it, and no matter what, and stand up to any bullies. Like I said, we had everybody, we we were the dominator in, after World War II, we had, because everybody else was leveled to the ground during World War II, except for the United States. And so we had all the power, and we could have just took over the world, and we, you know, and we created the United Nations, so I guess in a certain sense we did, but we didn't force anybody to do anything. You know, we didn't like become dictators of the world. And we set up the rule of law. One of the most significant things that the United States invented was the idea of the rule of law instead of the rule of man. We, you know, that's what the whole American Revolution was all about. And that's what we need to practice in this new time where we need the rule of law. You know, it's, it's the rule of law is the foundation of language. You know, is the nature of language is the rule of law. The whole universe is made out of the rule of law. You know, that's what God does is make the rules. God makes the rules 
and the universe evolves according to those rules. Always has and always will. Same thing with language. Language is a set of rules. You know, we follow these rules and you'll be able to understand each other. Everybody has to follow the same rules. You know, grammar, syntax, you know, language is a set of rules. And it's the same with computer science. You know, you got C, QML, and, you know, different languages. And that you can... And everybody has to speak the same language in order to understand each other. And that's natural. It's healthy. It's good. And this, and this is now we're building artificial intelligence based on these languages. And we figured out how to do that. And it's a good thing. Okay, but we do, we have to have some common law and rules and about how we should all interact with each other and with the science and and just uh, keep building a pleasant, you know, pick up the trash, clean up the, the neighborhood, you know, make our city safe, clean and decent places to live. So, it's, you know, people can be safe to walk around and enjoy the scenery. And, uh, you know, we can live in a nice, pleasant place to live, everybody. And, uh, you know, but teach poor people how to make money. You know, teach people a good work ethic. You know, working for some, you know, putting people on a pedestal and letting these CEO just because you go to school and get a college degree does not make you superior to other people. That is a false doctrine that is not sustainable. Okay, and we have to fix that. That is the most obnoxious rule. That's what causes every single war. Every war in the history of mankind is caused by people thinking they're more or less important than somebody else. Every crime, every war is caused by that. You know, the power differential. That, so, that power differential that they were so proud of, you know, at Idaho State University, that's the cause of all conflict. Because nobody in their, you know, no sane human being will accept the idea that they're less important than any other human being. That is just insane. It's crazy. And that doesn't mean that people are not smarter and have talent, you know, and they work harder, whatever. You know, it's just that this idea that somebody, just because they went to school and got a degree, it makes them more important. They should get more money and they should be able to tell everybody else what to do is insane and we need to fix that and we need to get rid of that idea we need to have a merit-based system where people are judged on the, the basis of merit you know their their deeds you know and not just you know they go to school and they go get their successful in school so they get a, you know an advantage over everybody else their school is valuable and it does give people an advantage, but it doesn't make them any more important, you know, than other people that don't have that education. And we need to deal with that. That's I'm telling you right now. I I have and my education is equivalent to anybody my age. Okay, I have been reading books my whole entire life from the time I was a little kid. I've been reading. I didn't go to school very much. I didn't get along with teachers very well, you know, because they thought they were so smart. You know, they were thought they were like better than everybody else, and they're not. And I studied, and I read, and I learned, and I, I, my education is just as good as anybody else's education. I don't care if you went to Harvard. I've gone to Harvard. I studied computer science at Harvard, you know, over on the internet, and so. You know, that's not the point. The point is, that's, that doesn't make me superior to anybody. And I'm not inferior to anybody because I didn't go to get a degree from some school. And that, that, those, those credentials, I believe that the credentials, you know, PhD, are the mark of the beast. Everybody talks about what's the mark of the beast, you know, and it's, oh, it's a vaccine. I, I, maybe it might be a vaccine, but, 
it's the any time you 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 force somebody to do something like that, like a PhD. Okay, if you got a PhD, you you can do a certain job, but you can't have have that. You can't do that job if you don't have that credential. That's a, that, that's the mark of the beast. You know, that's exactly what the mark of the beast is. And the same thing with vaccines. You can't you can't go work if you don't have the vaccine. That's the mark of the beast. It doesn't matter what the exact form of it is. It's what you're doing with it. You know, and we got to stop doing that. You know, that's it's kind of like racism. You know, of course racism is evil, and we got to stop it. You know, and heal that wound in our. our civilization and um, but I, 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 I still think that uh, um, artificial intelligence and transhumanism can be a good idea I, I would at this point I would say putting chips in people's brains is not a good idea but what about somebody that has schizophrenia or some other mental illness like that. A chip in the brain might be just the right thing to do for them. You know, so I, I, I'm i not 100% against it. I don't know. I think this is something the Universal House of Justice should consult with and consult about and, and kind of set some boundaries because it, that's a big important question that is, uh, you know, I don't know the answer. I believe that it's something that we should definitely pursue and study, investigate, and seek the truth. And we should do what's best for each individual and for the whole entire human race put together. And, um, but, uh, yeah, forcing people to do things or believe anything or anything like that, that's just, that's the one thing is not acceptable. The one thing is bullies. I cannot, bullies are bad. No matter what you're, what you're supposedly bullying people about. You know, I mean, society has to protect, it has a right to defend itself and we need to have police who do that and they need to be strong and, and able to deal with whatever they got to deal with physical you know use force if necessary for to protect the people and that's serve and protect the people that's what the police should do that's what the government all government that's the whole po- purpose of the government is to serve and protect the people and we you know we we we're, we're not the people don't serve the government the government serves the people and the, and the people are free and they're ruled by God. Anyway, I uh, it's life on Earth is an adventure, and I think it's we're going through one of the most fascinating times in my life. I mean, it's just get, it seems like it gets more and more interesting, and just wow, what's going on? What's, what is all this? You know, the spacefaring human civilization. We're getting ready to do the spacefaring civilization uh, deal is taken off, you know, and that's a neat, you know, and the artificial intelligence is taken off, and that's good, you know, and so all this stuff is good stuff. And the one world unity, the globalization, you know, the, the whole planet is just one big civilization, and that's a good thing. And we need to work on it and make it better, make it safe, clean, and decent the whole planet and uh, pick up the trash, make the city pedestrian friendly, build sidewalks so people can, trails so people can walk around and, you know, not have to look at garbage and stuff like that. You know, make a nice, pleasant place. Hire some of these poor people to pick up that trash and clean it up and keep it clean and paint you know, and get rid of all the garbage on the ground, you know, and the painting, you know, that graffiti. is All that is is just garbage, you know, and uh, clean it up. Just get it all cleaned up, man. 
and let's make this a safe, clean, and decent society. You know, you can get my book on uh, Home Office dot Studio. Get the book, uh, um, Holistic Home Office, and read it. Buy the book at uh, you know you can get it on Home Office dot Studio, and read the book. Watch the videos learn this is a very advanced education all these stories i wrote and videos you know i mean then i'm not a computer scientist so you know i'm not trying to do that and be the what my education you read the stories i wrote and it's a very advanced you could it can be a springboard to being a computer scientist it's kind of like a very entry level perspective of computer science but Altogether, it is a very advanced education. And the way I tell the stories is a very high performance teaching system. This website, homeoffice.studio, and you know, and all this stuff I'm putting together right now is a very advanced high performance teaching system, teaching and learning system. So Check it out. You know, I know I'm just a little poor guy. You know, home. You know, I'm like, I've been homeless before, and I hopefully I'll never be homeless again. But I'm right now. If I don't start making money, I'm gonna be homeless again. I you know, and I hope that doesn't happen. But uh, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help as many people as I can. In particular, I'm trying to help poor, homeless, working class people prosper in this 21st century world economy. But anybody can learn from what I'm teaching. I don't care how rich you are, how smart you are, how many how much college you have, you can learn by reading what I got to say. Because I didn't get my education from college, I got it from reading books and uh, living life on earth. And I, I, you know, I, th I, th I like telling stories. It's fun. So, thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day and a great life, and peace be with you.